And so reporting recently that uh, President Obama has extended uh, an agreement with Israel that has been uh, in existence since the time of President Nixon that the United States will protect the secrecy of uh, Israel's nuclear weapons program, which seems pretty ridiculous since uh, it's probably the worst kept secret in the world. Helen, this is my inaugural uh, moment here. <laughs> I'm really excited. Mr. President, do you know of any country in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons? Uh, with respect to nuclear weapons, uh, you know, I don't want to speculate. What I know is this, that if we see a nuclear arms race in a region as volatile as the Middle East, everybody will be in danger. Uh, and one of my goals is to prevent nuclear proliferation generally. Uh, I think that it's important for the United States, in concert with Russia, to lead the way on this, okay? All right. Um, Sam uh, Helen Thomas asked Obama at his first news conference if he knew of any country in the Middle East which possessed nuclear weapons. He said he didn't want to speculate. Uh, Senator, do you know of any country in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons? I'm not free to comment on that. You can't, you're on the end. Well, he asked about the Middle East. Uh, Pakistan yeah. clearly is a nuclear power. Why, why can you not say that Israel is a nuclear power, Senator? Uh, I'm sorry? Why can you not say that Israel is a nuclear power, Senator? Uh, I basically think it is, but I'm not somebody that's privy to all the details on that. Okay. Um, well, Pakistan, is. Pakistan clearly is, and that's why Pakistan concedes that, admits that. Do you have an estimate as to how many nuclear weapons Israel not. would have? I do not. Um, on on health care, um, Foreign policy question then. Um, uh, on Helen Thomas's first question to Obama was about nuclear weapons in the Middle East. She said, does some country have nuclear weapons? It was an obvious reference to Israel, which has a massive nuclear arsenal that the United States so far has refused to acknowledge. Would you acknowledge? I'm sorry, I missed the middle part of your question. It, does Israel have nuclear weapons? Well, I think that's a determination for Israel to declare whether they do or don't. If they, that's otherwise been established as a matter of fact, then it speaks for itself. Uh -huh. So, but, you know, we can make declarations about Iraq and Iran, and that's okay. Well, I think that that's not a matter of myth. It's a matter of fact. And so if there's enough facts to support that conclusion, then one can reach that conclusion. Uh, so as it relates to certain countries or individual countries, I don't think it's a matter of... Uh, hopes or myth, it's a matter of do you have sufficient evidence and facts to reach that determination. And if we do, we should speak the truth. And if we don't, then we need to say that. Welcome. Good morning. Do you know that Israel has nuclear weapons, Mr. Vice President? Does Israel have nuclear weapons? Right. Scott Wilson, Washington Post. Where's Scott? There we go. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you have spoken often about the need to bring U.S. policy uh, in line with its treaty obligations internationally uh, to eliminate the perception of hypocrisy mm -hmm. that some of the world sees toward the United right. States and its allies. In that spirit and in that venue, will you call on Israel to declare its nuclear program and sign the Non-Proliferation Treaty? And if not, why wouldn't other countries see that as an incentive not to sign on to the treaty that you say is important to strengthen? Well, uh, Scott, uh, Initially, we were talking about U.S. behavior, and then suddenly we were talking about Israel. Let me talk about the United States. Uh, I do think that, as part of the MPT, our obligation as the largest nuclear power in the world is to uh, make, take steps to reducing our nuclear stockpile. And that's what the START Treaty was about, sending a message that we are going to meet our obligations. Uh, and uh, as far as Israel goes, I'm not going to comment on their uh, program. What I'm going to uh, point to is the fact that consistently we have urged all countries to become members of the MPT. Kyle. Senator, doesn't Israel have nuclear weapons and doesn't that create volatility and doesn't it cause resentment? That's part one. Doesn't Israel's possession cause volatility? 
And part two, doesn't the U.S. cause resentment by not acknowledging it? The U.S. government has never acknowledged that Israel has an asset nuclear arsenal, which it does. What I believe, and I think most thoughtful people believe, is that Iran having a nuclear weapon and having a proliferation of nuclear weapons throughout the Middle East, because the, the odds are high that if Iran goes nuclear, that the Saudis will go nuclear, that the Egyptians will go nuclear, that the Jordanians may go nuclear, is not a good thing in the most volatile region of the world, which is why we need to use a thoughtful uh, diplomatic process to deal with this, this issue. But you're, you're not acknowledging that Israel has nuclear weapons. Senator, you're not acknowledging that Israel has nuclear weapons. I, excuse me, I can't hear him. I'm sorry. Back, back to Iran. Doesn't Israel's possession of nuclear weapons destabilize the region, especially since the U.S. government has never acknowledged I the think, existence? I think there's no comparison between Israel and Iran, and those who would draw a comparison ignore the fact that Israel is our ally. Now, you all re realize that Israel is our ally, right? Okay, how many don't realize that? Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Folks, I got news for you. Israel is not our ally. Look it, up in, look it up in your Webster's. Here's what it, Webster says. Ally, a sovereign state associated with another by treaty. There is no treaty. Now, one of the congressmen we were briefing last night said there should be a treaty. Well, you know what, folks? We sounded the Israelis out on that 30 years ago. We said, how about a treaty? That would make you feel so secure being in treaty relationship with us. Maybe you could give up the occupied territories. You know what the Israelis said? Thanks, but no thanks. We got the equivalent of a treaty. You, know, you, you call us an ally anyway. And you know, treaties require clearly defined international boundaries. And the Israelis didn't want any part of that. Okay? So, uh, let's be aware of the rhetoric. Let's be aware that uh, these things are realities. One of the congressmen said, well, it doesn't, doesn't matter that there's no treaty. Well, I think it matters. I'm sort of a strict constructionist on things like that. And for the president and others to say that there we're a treaty bound to spring to Israel's defense if it gets in trouble even by its own provocation, you know, that's really a, a, a distortion of the Constitution. It's a distortion of what George Washington warned about when he talked about passionate attachments of one country to another.